Howdy folks and welcome to episode 6 of the Australian Database Football Manager Save. Thanks to Skullduggery for his efforts with the database. So today we are playing our quarterfinal Coca-Cola Cup game against Sturt Lions before coming back to play Palmerston Panthers who are currently sitting third on the table. Our recent form has been very good, scoring lots of goals and not really conceding although the game against Darwin Throb was a little bit disappointing. Hub to do 8, Gallowinku 2 in round 20. Round 21 we had a 10-0 win over Palmerston Rovers, 5-3 win over Darwin Throb, so Darwin did quite well, and I've got to say Uni Azuri did quite well against us too, 4-2 in that game, but that was their best result against us, having played us three times this year. Uh, Humpty Doo then also beat Darwin City 6-1, and then Howard Springs went down 6-1 as well. And now looking at this latest approach from PSG for a loan for Heretics and Balls. Now obviously they're looking to make that move permanent during the course of the loan. This is actually probably going to be good for us financially. But yes, the Sharks are starting to circle. Now Harry Dixon Balls is, I would say, clearly our best player. He uh, is very creative on the field and probably just head and shoulders above all the other players that we have in this squad. So it'll be interesting to see how this one plays out. We will keep you posted, obviously. And interestingly enough, the club believe that they can get more money for him and they've actually decided to cancel that proposed transfer. So that will probably give us a little bit more breathing space. Good to see the board stick by us there. Yes, I think uh, we could definitely get more money for him. He's, a lot, he's worth a lot more than that. And in disappointing news, it appears that our young star, Sim Buki, is going to be out for six to seven weeks with a hamstring strain. Very disappointing for the young fella. He's had a few opportunities and his average rating is actually really positive. So it's just going to send him back a little bit, but he will come back stronger, I am sure. So the team for today, we're going the 4 2 3 1 again, and it's good to see those combinations coming up. Farts to Zars, Fleabors and Scammer in the midfield, Giorgio and Kerr up the right, and then obviously Dixon, Balls and Splash. So really, really encouraging to see that as we prepare to get into this game. The players are warming up on the sideline there, and we're getting ready for kickoff. So a couple of minutes in and nothing really happening there. We've had a couple of shots there from uh, Sturt Lions, and it's about eight and a half minutes in as they have a corner crossing it in there. It is diffused, although Fusco is running back for them. Uh, and it is Sturt Lyons with the another shot on goal there, but it's actually been cleared away there by Giorgio. So another corner from Sensafani there, and we're pushing it back. But Dixon Balls has actually picked up the ball and is looking to counter-attack, taking it down the right-hand side of the field, holding it up and kicking it back to Giorgio so he can push forward himself. Giorgio with the ball through to Dixon Balls. Dixon Balls puts it through and straight under the keeper. And it is 1-0 after 10 minutes. What a great goal there. That was Dixon Balls from start to finish. Giorgio with the ball through. But remember that it was Dixon Balls who initially got the ball and then passed it back to Giorgio. So that's Dixon Balls. 1-0. Brilliant start for the boys. Remember, this is the quarterfinal game for the Coca-Cola Cup. So they'll be looking to get through there. So 22 minutes in there. We've had four shots to three, so it's pretty tight. XG is also pretty tight as well there, but we do have the goal in the back of the net there. So one nil and splash with the ball now, holding it up to Kerr. Kerr crosses it in and it's put over the bar there. So it will be a goal kick to Sturt. Sturt with the ball now, pushing it forward, but Goldschmeckel's there in defense. There's Dixon Balls to Flea Balls there. Zars putting it through, and he finds Splash, who then finds Giorgio, putting it through to Scammer, and Scammer has put it over the bar there. So still 1-0 after 29 minutes. Five shots to four on goal, but it's still a pretty tight game. Kerr with the corner, crosses it in, and it's Scammer to get the scraps, but Samed seems to have intercepted there. The Beans is on it there. There's Giorgio, but their keeper comes out and takes the ball without any problem. So still a pretty tight game there. Sturt pushing it forward, trying to go route one there, but the defense is solid. There's Goldschmeckel to Giorgio. Giorgio moving forward, pushing it through there to Kerr. Kerr again, one of our better players. And Giorgio again running on, crossing it in. He's not able to find the player there, but Farts is back there to pick up the mess. Crosses it in, and it looks like Duffy has taken out Splash there. 
So we have a goal kick. I believe this is Giorgio taking it to look for 2-0. And he has done the job. So 2-0 after 34 minutes. So it looks like, even though it's a tight game, we're just a little bit more clinical where it counts. So really good effort there by Giorgio. The boys are just starting to assert their dominance on the game there. That XG is actually quite a bit higher now. Remember, Sturt came out pretty hard there, and they were competing for a long time. As we prepare for half-time, going into the Sheds, 2-0 up. The boys will be very happy with that. And Fleabors is on a yellow. We're looking at swapping him and Scammer around, and then looking to bring Tossacock off on for Fleabors for the second half. And Beans is also going to come off for Bannerman, who's actually going to play as a defender. Normally he's on the right or sometimes the left. But we're into the second half now. Ten shots to five. Pretty dominant display now from the boys. Uh, although there's not a lot of action happening at the moment. We have a corner from Kerr crossing it in. And oh, and it looks like Splash has cleaned up the dregs after hitting the post earlier. And it is 3-0. Just see that again on the replay. So Kerr crosses it in from the corner. I don't know who that was. I was Scammer who got up there, hit the woodwork, and then Splash finishes the job off. So 3-0. Pretty comfortable now, the boys. That XG is really blowing out in Humpy Doo's favour as well, which is really good to see. Giorgio with the throw in there, crosses it in now, and it's Scammer who heads it over the bar again. We've had our chances, but we're just not converting as many. Only five on target out of 13. But still, pretty happy with that. 72 minutes in, we're going to make another change as Robin Banks is going to come on for... Uh, what have we done there? We've taken off Giorgio. Yes. Okay, so interesting change there. We've left wet farts on there. But we're going to bring Regis Kuifa on for Wayne Kerr. Wayne Kerr has had a pretty solid game again. But we want to give some of the other boys a go now that this game is well and truly in hand. So 3-0 with about five minutes to go. Banks throws into Dixon Balls. Banks crosses it back in there. And it is Bannerman who picks up the dregs there. They're, they're really struggling to clear the ball, the uh, Stuart Lions. So Bannerman holds that up well. There's Kuiper crossing it in. And it is Scammer again who's putting it over the bar. Was that Scammer? Yeah, I think it was. Okay, so a few minutes to go. Fisher playing it out from the back to Goldschmeckel. Holding it up and then pushing it forward to toss a cock off. That up to Kuiper. Kuiper taking down the right-hand side there, crossing it midfield, but it's intercepted by the Sturt Line boys. And they're looking to move forward, but the defence is up to the challenge there. Sturt Lions with the ball again. They're trying to find a way forward, but it is a little bit hard through that midfield at the moment. Fusco pushing it forward again for Sturt. Um, but yes, they're really struggling to get past the midfield. So the midfield is doing the job, although they got through there now. And it looks like they've actually picked up a goal. Jacob Atkinson gets the goal in the 90th minute. A little bit of a problem in the defence there. They seem to get a little bit tangled up with each other there. And I don't know what happened there, but Atkinson... Banks sort of did okay, but he only managed to kick it straight back to Atkinson. And the ball goes in the back of the net. So 3-1. Still well in hand this game. There's only a minute or so left for play depending on injury time there's four minutes of injury time but we're going to see it through so it is 3-1 so congratulations to the boys well done and it's interesting to see Campbelltown City go down in penalties now we have a subscriber who's actually interested in Campbelltown so he'll be disappointed with that result but next time maybe next year as we look at the draw for the next round, and we have drawn Adelaide River. So again, they're the team coming second in our competition, and they have the main man, George Fakakakis, the Golden Greek, playing for them. In other news, we have seen Leo Keating has signed for Central Coast Mariners. Down from the Northern Territory Premier League, he's made it all the way to the A-League, so congratulations to him. And also, it is good to see that the Humpty Doo Youths have won the Australian Youth League Group 21 title. Done that quite well. And it looks like we've got a few very competent players coming through the ranks there. Okay, as we prepare for the Premiership game against Palmerston Panthers now. These guys are doing quite well. Pretty much got a similar side that ran out last game as we go on to the field there. 
and we've kicked off and uh, we've got a corner with Kerr crossing it in and it is denied there and the defence is just held out there. So four shots to nil after two, seven minutes of play and the boys are playing very well. Kerr's already started very strongly in particular. And Zas on the right hand side crosses it in there. There's Astley going back for the ball there so keeping it in play. Giorgio chips it over the top and Splash just can't quite get there. The keeper Smith has actually done very well there. It is back with Scammer now pushing the ball wide to Kerr who crosses it in and there's Dixon Balls with the first goal. So after 15 minutes, 1-0 to Humpty do. So Scammer does well here. Good vision there to put it out to Kerr who runs onto the ball nicely. Holds the ball up slightly, just pushes it a bit wider. And there's Dixon Balls unchallenged in the box, which I'd say Palmerston will be very disappointed with. So 10 shots to nil. It's actually pretty well one-way traffic at the moment. I think we're starting to prove that we are clearly the best team in this competition as Smith looks to push it out from the back, kicks it forward. But Scammer has the ball again and Zas this time running downfield. Puts it over the top there. But we look dangerous every time we get the ball and... Unfortunately for Palmerston, they're really struggling to clear it out of their own half. De Salvatore kicks it forward there, but once again the defence is too strong and Dixon balls with the ball. Puts it through the splash to Zas now. Zas running there and he crosses it in, puts it in to the goal. It is 2-0 after 31 minutes of play. Excellent vision there again. So Splash holding up the ball, pushing it forward to Zas. Zas taking on his man with just too much pace there and he's just beaten the keeper pointless there. So 2-0, very, very good goal there. But uh, again, we are dominating this game. 17 shots to nil so far. So I don't think we're in any trouble losing this game. It's just how many goals we can score. There's Splash putting it through to Kerr, but the keeper is up for the challenge there. Smith trying to play on there quickly, puts it forward, but there's no one really there. And Dick Meister at the back will get the ball. There's Beans to Giorgio. Giorgio pushing it through to Kerr again. Kerr has been immense for us this year. And Dixon Walls to Splash and Splash puts it in. That's his 53rd goal of the season. So 3 0 over Palmerston. And there is still another 12 minutes or so until half time. So this game's already been won, I would suggest. Dixon Balls again just holds it up slightly and just ensures that Splash is there for the run. Um, the defenders can't stop him and the ball goes in the back of the net. As we work our way up to half time there, it is still 3-0 there. Uh, Brown puts it forward for Palmerston, but Astley has the ball with farts now. Pushes it out to Zas again. Zas has been very strong again today. Push, tries to put the ball through, but Archer in defense has got that one sorted out. There's Beans putting it back there, and then Zas with the ball again to farts. Puts a ball in, finds Dixon Balls. What can Dixon Balls do? Once again, he holds it up, tries to put a sneaky cross through. The keeper fumbles it, but they are able to clear it this time. Torre running down the right. He's been actually quite a good goal scorer for Palmerston this year. And he's on again, and he's actually put a ball in the net. So again, he's got 48 goals himself this year, so that's actually not a bad effort whatsoever. So you can see why they're probably still in third spot, these two guys. They've obviously got potency in Torre. He beats Dick Meister pointlessly there. So 3-1 just before half time. That's if you're gonna score a goal, that's pretty well the time to score it as we go into the dressing room. Looking to make a substitution now. And it is Bannerman coming into the defense for Astley. And Tosser Cockoff is gonna come on for Scammer. As we go into the second half there. As flea balls holding up the ball slightly for Beans and then Giorgio looking to go up the right. Puts the ball through, Dixon Balls is there and splashes on the ball straight away. So they've scored within 15 seconds or so of the second half. So 4-1. Good vision again, Giorgio pushing the ball through there. Dixon Balls runs onto it very quickly and there's Splash uncontested in the middle there. Puts the ball away. Have a free kick just outside the box and Dixon Balls is to take it, puts it into the wall. The defence is up to the challenge there. Flea Balls to Zas though and Zas puts it across and it is Splash with goal number 5. So 5-1. 
So, a vicious onslaught straight after half time. Caesar scored two goals in two minutes there in Splash. He's one of the best finishers in the game. As we continue on there, the XG 3.68 to 0.19 just shows the golf between the two teams. Interesting to see that Darren Throbber over Adelaide 1 0 there. So that's a, a surprise result. Darwin from a solid side there, but Adelaide should be too good for them normally. Archer on the attack there. Tries to cross it in, and it looks like Torre has been brought down in the box. So they will have a penalty here. And it's Driscoll to take it, and he has driv driven it down the middle there, and Dick Meister has gone the wrong way. So 5-2. But uh, there's still, what, uh, the best part of 25 minutes left of play in, in real time before injury time. But I can't really see them coming into it. The, uh, they're just making a change there with uh, Splash coming off after his three goals and the boy is coming on there. I can't really see Palmston coming back into this game. Uh, they've got a three goal, three goal deficit and there's just not creating enough opportunities. Although there's Torre again, and he's put it over the bar this time. So 15 minutes left to play there. Dick Meister playing out from the back there. Beans to Giorgio. Pushes it out to Kerr. Kerr once again being strong all of that. Wasn't his best delivery there, and it's actually allowed um, the Palmerston boys to go on the attack, although Tosikopov now has it for Hump to do. There's Zars on the left. Crosses it in, and it is Boy who has got goal number six. So it is 6 2 now. 15 minutes left to play there. So Zas holds it up once again, puts the ball through, and Boy times his run to perfection there. Hits the woodwork, but it is the rebound that actually puts it back in the net. So interesting, Adelaide River have actually gone 2-1 up over Darwin and it's the fucker carcass man again who puts them in the lead. And he's done it again, it's 3-1 there now. So again, very hard man to stop and he must be the favourite for the top goal scorer of the competition. There's Kerr down the right again, holding it up, pushing it through there to flea ball. So he's on a yellow at the moment, you have to be careful of that. There's Torre. Torre is playing a pretty well alone hand for his side there as Lick Dick has done the job there. So it's 6-3. Um, so that, they've competed. They've done the best they can, but they've just been a little bit outclassed there. So Torre again puts a beautiful ball through for Lick Dick and then he beats Dick Meister pointlessly there. That was, uh, that was almost too easy there. The defence a little bit slow there, but... There's full time there, 6 3, comfortable win really. And um, we're on top of the table there, nine points clear of Adelaide River, although we have an extra game on them, so realistically that's really only a six point guaranteed lead. And here's the man himself, there he is, George Fakakakis, what a player. And if you have a look at the comparison, him and Dick Splash are neck and neck there. Uh, if we were able to sign him, that would be quite a coup, but. I have the feeling that he'll be looking higher than us to move forward there. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for your attention and we will see you in episode seven. Take care guys and we'll see you then. Bye.